name, amen. Remember Israel and those that have rule over us. Let's start with verse 34, reading in unison. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright, for the end of the man is peace. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. In Jesus' name, amen. If our congregation step out in the aisle and shake hands with fellow church members and visitors, greet them with a smile and let's worship our Lord. Amen. your praises to the Lord. Lift your praises to the Lord. Lift him higher in one accord. Lift your praises to as we sing this again. Lift your praise to the Lord. Oh, lift your praise to the Lord. Oh, lift him higher in one accord. Lift your Is he worthy? For he, oh, he alone is worthy to receive all praise and glory. Lift him higher in one accord. Lift your praise. just for a moment. We lift you up, Lord. We praise your name. We glorify you, Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. While we're standing, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. I want to remember Brother John Mick. He had a 
spell, I think Monday, and had to go into the hospital, or yes, I believe it was Monday, and then they did discharge him Monday evening. I thought somebody said he was here tonight. I, uh, he, he just went out. Okay, let's remember him. Uh, and um, also, uh, Brother Greathouse, May uh, was hoping he'd get to come home today. I don't know if he did, but uh, he's been in rehab. I want to continue to remember him. Brother Matt Calhoun texted before service that he was uh, sick and so wasn't able to come. And uh, I know there are several that need prayer. If you'll raise your hand. I know we have our standing request and Brother Tim Galoni and others, Brother Tracy Keys and several of our standing requests and you have the handout. But I'm glad we can pray for one another, aren't you? Praise God. So <clears throat> don't forget all of these needs and uh, we're going to pray. If you'd like to be anointed, you can come. We're going to just continue to believe the Lord. <clears throat> Let's pray together. Lord, we love you. We're going to lift our praises to you, Lord. Thank you for your many blessings to us. Thank you, Lord, for the touch of your spirit. Thank you, Lord, for a good report for Sister Tammy Farson. Thank you, Lord, for your touch, your mercy. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Got to mention Sheena had an echocardiogram today and they haven't given her the results but um, just continue to remember her in prayer we're just believing the Lord's got all this stuff under control amen and so hallelujah glory good to be in the house of the Lord but good to feel the touch of the Holy Ghost we want our ushers to come and uh, receive our Wednesday night offering. We appreciate your faithfulness, your giving. <clears throat> I know um, not this week, but next week will be our, uh, I think this week is our ladies' care groups. Next week will be our uh, breakfast. So a lot of things happening. Lord, bless you. And Lord, bless every gift and giver. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's march. Hallelujah. Sing a praise as you come. Hallelujah. Lift our praises to the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Again, I want to, you may be seated, I want to thank all of those and then some that worked behind the scenes Monday and Tuesday and Monday and, and making all of the, doing the shampooing of the rugs and in the prayer room and in my office and everywhere. It was very, very much uh, needed and very much appreciated and I appreciate all of it you that were able to be a part of that. There was a great team here Saturday and then they continued working on Monday and on uh, <coughs> uh, this week. So uh, thank you. And uh, if you were a part of that, we thank you. We, Lord bless you. We, we appreciate all of your faithfulness. Glory. Uh, Brother Heath Waters is going to come with the word of the Lord tonight. And um, 
I do appreciate Brother Heath and this family. We've been blessed uh, over the last several years, more than uh, we've been a blessing to them, I'm sure, because uh, of his unfortunate accident, it has freed him at times for me to call and bug him a lot. <laughs> and all of the men and women that speak are involved in numerous areas in our church. <clears throat> it's not just come here and say something, but they are all feel a burden for this congregation and these people and you and, and everyone that's here. And I appreciate that. They are all uh, actively involved in other areas of ministry and um, <clears throat> they do their best to uh, all support and all do their best to carry a burden and um, <clears throat> a lot of behind the scenes stuff that I I have to rely on a lot of these guys to do like uh, <clears throat> last minute uh, go with me and pick up stuff from Brother Kramer or do this or get a chair or move a, a bed and uh, I appreciate everybody always makes me feel like they are glad to do it I don't know but uh, they are able to. They're able to fake us out anyway. But I do appreciate Brother Heath, his wife, family, children, and uh, <clears throat> we just uh, love and appreciate him. Amen. Let's give him a hand. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. As always, uh, Pastor is always very gracious and in his uh, introduction. Um, I would say we're probably a lot more grateful for you guys than uh, than he probably lets on. But uh, uh, we have, uh, you know, you guys have been involved in our entire growth with our, of our entire family and uh, been a very crucial part. Um, your prayers, your support um, financially and just, just giving a good word every once in a while. Just to, hey, how you doing? Uh, it, it just, it means everything to us. We're very appreciative of this church and... Uh, Thank the Lord to be here. Well, tonight, uh, I, uh, I've had quite a long time to prepare for this. And uh, I was telling Brother Rogers, I know the Lord has a sense of humor because uh, <laughs> as of last night, I was still sitting in my chair staring at all my material going, I got nothing. I have nothing. And that doesn't usually happen to me. I usually have my lesson way ahead, and uh, I was starting to get very nervous, actually. I was starting to get pretty scared. I'm like, Lord, uh, you know, it, it's, it's me, Lord. I'm, I'm here. Um, you know, you say you'll never leave us, never forsake us. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm not sure what to do here. And uh, as he as he usually does, um, that with his with his gracious uh, sense of humor, uh, he he woke me up about three thirty or so this morning, and uh, about nine o'clock he was done. So uh, <clears throat> so I I'm going to give you uh, the word that the Lord has given me, and um, I'm going to try to get through this. Uh, I I can't lie to you; it was sometimes hard to see through the phone uh, with me shedding my own tears. So. Uh, um, the Lord was really working on me through this, and uh, I, I hope, as Josh, Brother Josh Garza said, that what's in here can come out of here. So tonight I'm going to talk to you about, uh, we've been talking about roots, and uh, I, I told Pastor um, that through this fasting and all this, and the prayer, and uh, just corporately, uh, it's just been an overwhelming spirit. I, I've just... I felt the Lord more now than I have in a long time, and uh, I told him I, I've told him this numerous times, but it just feels like an awakening to me. The only the only word that can ever come to me is awakening, and uh, so tonight I'm going to talk to you about awakening of a root system, and uh, I'm going to start by just kind of telling a story um, of kind of where I came from. And, uh, you know, Brother Matt uh, Calhoun kind of bared his soul uh, last week, 
and um, that must be the theme because uh, it, it's my turn. So uh, where I grew up, uh, I grew up just a few miles down the street from where I live now. And uh, I grew up in a trailer park. And, uh, you know, we didn't have a lot of money, but it was home. It was home. And, uh, but I, I was, uh, I was gracious. I had a, a gracious upbringing in, in sorts because my mother always prayed for me. She was always praying for us. Anytime we got hurt, anytime it was anything, it was prayer before a Band-Aid, usually. So, uh, you know, that was, uh, that was something that always was instilled into me. Um, not something I always looked straight toward myself, but it was always something that she did, and it was a great example for me. But uh, as you know, as a kid growing up in a trailer park, um, you don't know any better. You think the trailer park's a kingdom. It was great. There was tons of kids to play with. It was, you know, it was, we enjoyed it. You know, it, there was no shame in it at all. So I, I went to elementary school and, um, you know, never had, never had much trouble in elementary school. Um, was always, you know, kind of popular uh, in some sorts, you know, popular in a worldly sense, I guess. Um, you know, I was kind of, I was, I was kind of the fastest kid in the class. Uh, I got pretty good grades. Um, had a few girlfriends. Uh, and <laughs> up to sixth grade, I was, you know, pretty popular. And, uh, but then I began to, uh, you know, go through that, that classic time when you're 12, 13 years old, you know, you start putting on a little bit of weight and uh, start getting a little chunky and, you know, it, it, it's, it's a tough time for a young kid. And um, on, on top of that, I was the shortest kid in the class, so I didn't really have anything to stretch it out with. So, uh, so as, I, as I grew, so did my surroundings. Um, and the more roots I would need to survive, because I was doing well in elementary school, but here comes junior high. In junior high, we had separate elementaries. So when we all came together, every elementary came to one school. And that's a little overwhelming when you're used to having, uh, you know, maybe 30 kids around you. And now there's, uh, you know, 100 and some. So, you know, any kind of... Uh, popularity or any anything like that goes out the window you pretty much start from scratch and um, it was very humbling very scary very intimidating I was completely out of my element um, the school where I was at before I was I wasn't really an outgoing kid I didn't talk a lot I wasn't super social um, so coming into junior high wow I, uh, I didn't stand much of a chance being a little overweight being a little socially awkward, it wasn't, it wasn't good. So now, uh, and I, I did find out that year that suddenly I was trailer park trash. I didn't realize that until then, but suddenly I found out that I was trailer park trash, and uh, that was new to me. Um, but, it, you know, I began to get in more trouble. I found that, uh, you know, getting in trouble would get me at least noticed a little bit. Um, I became kind of a class clown. Uh, my grades began to plummet. Um, you know, it was just a, it was a downward spiral. Nothing, nothing was going, going well. Uh, I prog progressively did worse. I had fewer friends and began to not really care. Um, the one little hope I had was I, I still played football and um, but like I said, I was the shortest kid in the class and slightly chubby. So, you know, uh, now I'm with all of the kids from other schools that are, you know, faster, taller, skinnier. Um, I didn't have many girlfriends that time. <laughs> didn't have to worry about that. Um, so, by the, by the eighth grade, uh, at this point, you know, I had pretty much used up all my sick days. I found any excuse I could to stay home. I was just, I was over school. I didn't want to try anymore. I, did, I didn't want to try to be, to fit in. Didn't want to try to be popular. Just, just wanted to go away. Just want to be left alone. And uh, I, I hated school at that time enough that I, I just, I lied. 
mean, I lied about anything and everything so I could stay home or, or, or whatever. I lied about my grades. Um, it, it, was, uh, it was not a good time for me. I was putting myself in a box. And instead of growing more roots, um, the good roots started to die, at least in my eyes. Uh, you see, I always believed there was a God. I would pray when I needed something. I prayed to be popular again. Don't we all as kids, right? Uh, through these times, I could feel the Lord reaching out for me. I didn't know much about him, but I knew he was there. He was saying to me, wake up. Wake up. I have an easier path for you. And of course, I didn't, I didn't heed that. So I, I survived through junior high. Not that summer, I began to grow. I began to get taller. Um, I began to get stronger. I was feeling pretty good about myself going into high school. Then on July 7th, like I said, I gotta try to get through this. <clears throat> On July 7th that year, my dad was in a head-on collision. <clears throat> he was injured pretty badly. Um, it was kind of a, it was a pretty rough time for all of us. We wasn't sure exactly the outcome, whether he'd be able to walk again, work again. And uh, as I mentioned, we lived in a trailer park and didn't, we didn't have much money in the first place. So as a kid, you know, I remember the, remember the stresses of that, thinking, man, are we still going to have a home and, and, and everything. And uh, so my dad had the accident on July 7th. July 10th was my birthday. And the, uh, the young kid that was in the accident with my dad died that day. And um, it, it was, it was kind of rough for quite a few years. My birthday came around. I could always see a little piece of my dad die on that day. <clears throat> we had a birthday party in the hospital. He was kind of in and out of sleep. Uh, again, I felt the Lord calling me, wake up, wake up. We had started football conditioning that summer. <clears throat> and any of the fat that I had left on me, they made sure it was gone. <clears throat> they, uh, that was the first time I experienced two-a-days. And if you don't know what that is, it's a practice at the crack of dawn and a practice in the evening. And um, they make sure you throw up before you leave. But something was different that year. Uh, my dad had always worked. My dad couldn't work and was still on crutches. He came to all my practices. It, it changed something in me. I began to play better. I was getting bigger, stronger, faster, and I was actually a starter that year. But again, I, I, I wasn't seeking the Lord. I, I stopped praying. I didn't need the Lord's help anymore. I had my dad there, and I was rooted in football and my dad's advice. The next year, the next couple years, I started into high school. And life wasn't too bad. We had football practice after school. And uh, I was giving my all for the first time in my life. And then after school, at the beginning of practice, we were doing stretches. And I felt a stabbing feeling in my back while I was doing sit-ups. The trainer wasn't there that day, so I continued to practice. The, uh, the next day, we had practice again. And the coach pulled me off and sent me to the trainer. And uh, they had discovered that uh, I had had a vertebrae sticking out of my back. So, you know, all the hard work and all the time I'd put in and all the high expectations, high hopes, you know, uh, they, were, they were just, they were crushed that day. And uh, basically my football career was over. I never, I never played again. I was benched and, and never cleared to play. Again, my shallow roots came into play. I was depressed, frustrated. My, 
grades again began to reflect it. My midterm came in after that. I had a .09 grade point average. So not only was I on the injured list, but now I was standing on the sidelines and eligible as well. I, uh, I spent the entire season on the sidelines. Again, the Lord gave me the opportunity to wake up and look toward Him. I was not rooted enough to see that the Lord just wanted a relationship with me. I struggled the next two years to accomplish good enough grades to move on. I was, I was then gracious, graciously accepted into the vocational school in the electrical program. You see, even though I was not seeking the Lord, He was guiding me. He was being my roots. He was holding me up until I could hold myself. For the first time, school wasn't so bad. I was actually getting decent grades. Plus, I had met a young lady who began, I began to get very close to. Then it was time for another tree shaker. My grandfather passed away suddenly of a massive heart attack with no warning. He had just been to the doctor that day and got a clean bill of health. Said he was uh, probably 20 years younger than what he actually was. He was one of my best friends and one of my biggest fans. It was, a, it was a hit. It hit me hard. I didn't take it well. But... For the first time in my life, I began to realize that nothing or no one lasts forever. My grandfather talked about the Lord and professed the Lord with everyone, everywhere. Johnny Predmore is a, is a uh, person that my grandfather influenced every day. And he still talks to, talks to me about him daily. His passing began to wake me up. Romans 11, 14, and 15. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, and might save some of them. For if the casting away of them be reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? You see, that day my grandpa died, he began to give me life. And uh, you see, sometimes the Lord is not just the roots. Sometimes the Lord is not just the roots when we are holding ourselves, or he is the roots when we are, we are not holding ourselves up. Sometimes he's also the wind and the storm. Sometimes he forces us to grab on and establish roots. Through those pressures and winds and landslides, we, are, we learn to hang on. You see, even when, we don't, even when we don't know what we're hanging on to, we still hang on. I knew at that time I needed to grab hold of something and quick. You see, my grandfather's death was giving me life. I remember sitting in our lab at the vocational school and looking around at my classmates and realizing for the first time how weak they all were. They were just like me, struggling to hold it all together. When days before, I thought they had it all together. I remember seeing one of my best friends there across from me. He had the, the workstation right across from me. His face was beet red. And he was sweating badly from being drunk the night before. He had just gotten arrested for the seventh time for a DUI. And I remember feeling pain for him that day. For the first time, I remember feeling compassion for someone 
in a deeper way that I had never felt before. I remember thinking, what is wrong with me? I almost felt emotional. and That was definitely not my personality. I was more of, you got arrested again? Man, what's your problem, man? I would have probably teased them. Like, haven't you learned yet? But that day I just, I was different. I could feel a strength coming into me that I had never felt before. I felt like that I was actually getting my feet under me. The Lord was being my root cap. See, the root cap is the uh, protective layer that is in the tip of a root. It puts off a mucus that lubricates the surface of the area. And it makes it easier for the root to penetrate the surface. Allowing it to grow quicker and easier. It was time for me to make a decision. Time for me to go to a different direction. It was time for me to wake up. In Joel 3, 9 through 14, it says, Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your, share, your plowshares with, into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither, thither cause they, might, they mighty ones come down, O Lord. Let the heathens be wake, wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Wherefore will I set to judge all the heathen round about? Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get ye down, for the press is full. The fats overflow, and their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of of decision. See, I was in the valley of decision that day. Sorry. Oops, keep moving here. I was in the valley of decision that day, and uh, I knew I had to make a decision whether I was going to stand up and make a stand for the Lord and wake up. See, I was, uh, I was very influenced by others. And, uh, you know, all, all the guys that are around me, and like I said, they were struggling as bad as I was. And here I thought that I was the only one struggling. So, I decided that day that I was going to take my plow and turn it into a sword. From then on, I was going to stand up for the Lord. And I was, I was not going to let them influence me. I was going to try to influence them. It was time to grow some roots, but not only roots, it was time to grow a backbone. Philippians 2.12 Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. We all, we all know and have heard this verse. It's time for us to work on our root system. There is a heaven and a hell, and we're not the only thing growing roots. In Matthew 13, the devil sows tares among the wheat. You see, the devil is out, out sowing seeds and sowing root too. It is time for us to get deeper roots. But the devil can only sow on fertile ground among our wheat. 
Psalms 1 and 3. And he shall be like a tree planted by the river of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Jeremiah 17, 8. Kind of another version of that. For he shall be as a tree planted by the rivers of water, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of the drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. See, in all my research for this lesson, I was never able to see where the devil could sow anywhere else but among our wheat. But we shall be as a tree planted by the rivers of water. The devil can't sow seed by the riverside or on the mountain. Only God. So it's time for me again to wake up. Have you ever seen a tree growing on the side of a big rock or a cliff? The roots wrap around that rock. They grab hold of that rock and they do not let go. If they let go, they will fall over the edge into certain death. You see, the devil, he can't sow on the side of that rock. He can't sow on our mountain. He cannot sow on the rock. See, there's moisture in the rock. There's security in the rock. There's coolness in the heat of the day. But there's also solid ground. You see, our Christ, the sol on Christ the solid rock, we stand. Unless the tree lets go of the rock, it'll never fall. You see, the rock is there to stay. So I say again, it's time to wake up. The only way that tree, us, as Christians, are going to fall is if we let our, loot, our roots go from that rock. You know, as I was uh, getting this lesson and, and going through this, um, <laughs> I was wondering myself where the Lord was going. And, uh, you know, I've heard that song a million times when I was uh, growing up. As a tree planted by the water, I shall not be moved. And, uh, and if you think about that, and you think about, uh, you know, the devil trying to sow, sow among that. You know, even tares can't grow on a rock. Even tares can't grow on the rock. Even wheat can't grow on the rock. It's only the roots. If the, uh, the tree didn't have roots, it couldn't grow on the rock. So I, I don't have a lengthy, lengthy message tonight. But tonight, the Lord is just saying, we need to get our roots wrapped around the rock. And I, I thank God for what Pastor has been teaching and preaching about the Holy Spirit and, and about uh, the Holy Ghost and just, just the, uh, the in-depth detail and, and uh, the way the Lord is just expounding and expounding and expounding and showing us a deeper level uh, through these days of fasting. I know uh, it, it is... Is is affected my family? Um, you know, we, we did the uh, we did the media fast. That's probably one of the most abnormal weeks we've ever had in our our whole life of marriage and everything. It just you know because we didn't watch TV, we didn't play on our phones, and uh, we spent time with each other. We talked with each other. You know, we 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 talked about you know midwinter and, and and things like that. It was it was enjoyable. We actually had supper at the table. I mean, who does that anymore? You know, and, uh, and it, was, it, it was great. And I, and I tell you, I'm just, I am so thankful for what the Lord is doing. I'm thankful for what he's doing in his congregation. Uh, you know, 
I look around and I see the, the brother Tim Galonis and, you know, the brother Tracy Keys and, and uh, you know, brother Dale Greathouse is struggling now. My, my grandfather struggled with some health issues and, and uh, you know, I know as long as we hang on with, our, with all the roots in us, the Lord is going to take care of these situations. And um, I, I thank God for this, this, uh, for this message. I'm thank thank, thankful for where he's brought me from. Thankful for the family he's, he's brought me from. And, uh, I, thank you, uh, I thank you as a church for lifting us up, supporting us, and always being there for us and always praying for us. I'm going to close tonight in prayer, and then I'm going to let Bishop, if he has anything else to add. Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you so much for your spirit. We thank you for your word. Lord God, we thank you so much that you are, you are the rock that we can just wrap our roots around and hang on to, Lord God. Lord Jesus, when the winds come, Lord God, Lord, we can just, we can just hang on ever so tighter, Lord God. Lord, we will never fall as long as we are with you. We thank you so much for all your many blessings, your great love. Your gracious love toward us. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Let's stand. <laughs> Glory to God. Praise the name. I thank the Lord for the word, Brother Heath. It is. Uh, let's come uh, up here to the front. It is time. It's time for all of us to shake ourselves and realize what hour we're living in. And I believe that every one of us, every now and then, we have to shake ourselves. Say, Lord, uh, what hour is this we're living in? Folks, the world, and you know this, the world is on fire. They can't figure out the viruses. We don't know where, what's going to happen. Politically, we're on fire. Health-wise, we don't know. Don't know how safe we are tomorrow. Nobody has the answer. It's perplexity. Can't find the answer. So you know where we are? We're in the fiery furnace. You're in the fiery furnace. But guess what? Three Hebrew children were in it way, way back in the Old Testament. And it was so hot, it was seven times hotter. And when the king looked over into that fire, he said, guess what? They're walking around having fellowship with someone that looks like the Son of God. Only thing that those big, strong men bound those young men with, the ropes were burned off, the bondage was gone, and they were having fellowship with one that looked like the Son of God. You know what's going to keep us in this world? Is having that fellowship. Realizing, waking up, as Brother He said, and realizing it is on fire. But guess what? The church, the body, Thank God. I'm going to walk around. Thank God. He, he, didn't, he didn't save them from the fire. He saved them in the fire. God's going to save us when the world is on fire. We're going to walk around, thank God, arm in arm with the Lord. One like unto the Son of God. He's there to help us, to keep us. Thank God. Let's just lift a hand to him. Thank him for his presence. Lord, we love you this night. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit that's able to bless us and touch us and keep us uh, in the midst of a world that's on fire. Your presence, your fellowship uh, will keep us. We give you thanks. We praise you for your word. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen, amen.
Praise God. God bless you. Shake hands with one another. Lord, bless each one.